Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Suddenly Single. I'm Shira Raymond. Hi, so I wanted to talk about this really important topic, which is called grief. Now, for a lot of people, they might not even be aware that they are still grieving and they're hiding these emotions, which keeps them very low on the emotional intelligence chart by Dr. David Hopkins. And here's a copy of it. Let's see how well you can see it. Um, but if we look down here, grief is uh, towards the bottom. And these are still in the negative emotions. It's only once we get, whoops, get to courage here at 200 that we start to move into the more positive motion emotions. So um, it's interesting. Um, I think a lot of people view grief as, you know, the loss of a loved one or a significant other, a child, something like that. But sometimes, or oftentimes, grief also shows up and, oh my gosh, I wasted all of those years or all the regrets that we might have for the things that we didn't do or we did that we wish we had done differently. Now, in those instances, obviously you have a choice in how you're going to view uh, each instance in your life. When it comes to the loss of a loved one, that too should only have a finite time that you allow yourselves through the grieving process. But grief occurs not only with the loss of a loved one, it could be when you lose a job or maybe a relationship, could be a friendship or a more significant relationship or, you know, uh, a belief system. You know, sometimes things happen to people that are in a religious setting and somebody high up in the organization or that they view as a leader does something to them that was really, really hurtful. And so they start looking at the person as uh, a representation of their beliefs instead of understanding that this is a person, the person is human and they make mistakes. But when you look at the bigger picture, maybe it has nothing to do with their beliefs at all. They just were kind of thrown off balance by it. Another thing is just life in general. You know, oftentimes we don't take the steps to accomplish the things that we want to accomplish in life out of fear or other emotions that are holding us back. And then when we hit a certain point, maybe it's midlife, you know, you, everyone hears about those midlife crisis, or even when you talk to people on their deathbed, you know, they have so many regrets for what they didn't do or that they allowed fear to keep them from growing uh, and doing the things that they really wanted to accomplish in their life. And uh, another type of grief could be towards an institution. Uh, again, if you felt wronged by that institution, whether it be a school or a hospital or someplace else that uh, you may have grief. Could be uh, somebody who was in the service and had an accident and are now suffering PTSD or they lost a limb, right? There's a lot of grief there that their life is never going to be the same as it was before. But, you know, everything in life is all a growth, a tool for growth. And so we can always find excuses to keep us within our grief and feeling small. But we also have an amazing opportunity to grow and really be the best version of ourselves that we can be through any circumstance. I mean, like, look at those para, uh, para Olympics. I mean, those people, some of them are like extreme athletes. 
And what they accomplish is unbelievable. And they do not let their disability hold them back. They had their period of grief when they went through it, but then they were like, okay, now it is time for me to move forward and see what I can accomplish with my life and my limitations the way that they are now. But one of the great things about uh, grief is that it's an emotion where we're really crying out for help, that we want that support of other people that are around us uh, instead of just holding it into ourselves. And most people, especially men, don't even realize that they're suppressing their grief or their or whatever feelings they are in general. And as we know, as we talked about last week, when we suppress those emotions, then they have to come out somehow and often they show up as disease. And so if we look at the first instance when a particular illness or disease showed up in our life that wasn't there before, often we can track it back to a time when something significant happened and we never dealt with it. So it's really, really important to process your emotions and to acknowledge them. You know, give them a name, give them space, let them know it is okay to be there in your body. And sometimes when we just sit, there's a process called the peace process. And it's really, really huge for allowing us to release these emotions is first off, being aware of what the emotion is. Second, trying to locate where it is in your body. Because a lot of times we find emotions are stuck either in our stomach or in our throat, or in our heart, sometimes in our head, um, and sometimes other parts of our body as well. But once we can put a name and a place to those emotions, that's already half the battle of being able to process them and to move through these, um, through these emotions and allow them to process. So once we have that awareness, what we want to do is just really focus our attention on those feelings that we're feeling in our heart or our throat, wherever it is, and not judge it. And let it know it's safe to be there. And you appreciate it because it's bringing an awareness to your body and to yourself that maybe you weren't aware of before. And the third thing that's really important with it also is to send it love and say, you know what, I, I hear you that you're in a lot of pain and it's okay. It's okay for you to feel this way and just acknowledge it. Because the more that we can start to acknowledge our pain, we can start to surrender to it and to release it from our, from our bodies. And that's the easiest way to get rid of and make sure that we do not get disease in our body. All these experiences and all these emotions that come to us are there for our higher good and for us to grow to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. And so we're not supposed to get stuck in those lower emotions. We're supposed to move up into gratitude. And if we begin or as we begin to acknowledge these emotions and acknowledge the feelings and where they're located in our body, you know, if we quiet our mind, we can and follow these emotions. Sometimes they move from one place of the body to another, but that's all positive because it's movement, right? And just keep sending that love and acceptance. And oftentimes you'll find that after 10 or 20 minutes of just focusing on it and accepting it, it will release. And once it releases, it's gone. And you no longer have to waste time or energy on that negative emotion anymore. It's a really, really powerful and simple tool that you can do for yourself. I do it with my clients, but I do it with energy healing. And it's so powerful 
to be able to experience that. And I guide them through the experience. So oftentimes we handle loss in one of two ways. Um, we can experience it by um, attachment, like whether it be with another relationship or um, uh, an, or going with another person because we don't like being alone or um, we have a fear, right? So we often will cling to other people hoping to get that relief that we so desperately need from our emotions, but we're not willing to face them. And I know with my marriage, you know, when I, when I got married, I was in my mid thirties and I really wanted to be married and have children then. And my husband and I, my ex-husband and I met and we didn't go out very long at all. And then we got married and we had made a commitment to each other that we would stay married. And I admit I broke that promise. But I realized as I began to grow, the relationship wasn't growing. And I couldn't be in a one-sided relationship anymore. And so with any kind of relationship, whether it be with ourselves or with other people, we need to constantly be working on ourselves because God or source energy is always going to throw things at you to challenge you. That's his job. His job is to make you grow. And if everything was easy peasy every single day, you'd get bored and you wouldn't grow because you'd have nothing to work towards. But as we move into these higher emotions, it allows us to um, handle those emotions much easier. Now, the second way people often deal with emotions is, um, or with grief, is pretending they're the ostrich and burying their head in the sand. You know, denial is a wonderful thing. Okay, I'm saying it sarcastically. It's really not a wonderful thing, but so many people don't want to face the truth about what is going on with themselves or with the world that they just accept their narrative to the story instead of looking at both sides and seeing, you know what, something's a little curious here and I really want to see if maybe uh, my perspective is off and what I can do to grow to be the best version of myself. You know, it's interesting um, if you look back at World War II, you know, there it was in the wind of what was coming with Hitler. And a lot of the Jews, some of them escaped. They saw what was coming and they said, you know what? We have got to get out of here at any cost. And they sold their stuff, they fled their homes, they fled their countries, they took their kids and they left. And a lot of them didn't. And I think partly because who would have believed that something so horrific like the Holocaust could have happened, right? And so I feel like that's part of, you know, burying your head in the sand and not really being aware or understanding or questioning things around you, your emotions and other things that are going on in your life to see if maybe the narrative that you have bought into isn't the correct narrative anymore. This is also part, into, part of learning to grow, to be the best version of yourself, to get your head out of the sand um, and to move forward. And as we move out or through grief, often other emotions come along with it. There could be anger or rage or blame. And I just read a very interesting statistic earlier as I was putting my notes together for the show. And it said that married couples who lose a child, and this could be a really, really great marriage, very, very strong. 
if they lose a child, they have a 90% chance of getting divorced because they allow blame to get in the way too much of processing their emotions in a positive, healthy way. Now, that's really sad. If you have a great relationship and you're not processing your emotions in a positive way, that it that you allow it to affect really your life, the rest of your life because of that one instance incident that happens. I mean, it's a huge incident for sure. But, you know, sometimes we have to realize that we can't do this on our own. And that often we need a professional, whether it be a coach or a therapist or, or a good friend that you can confide in, right, as you work through those emotions. And that we don't use our significant others or spouses as the punching bag as we're moving through these emotions. So this is all part of the growth process to be the best version of yourself you can be. So some of the ways to move past grief and move yourself into those higher emotional states is acceptance. You know, accept the situation for how it is. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is so huge on all fronts whether it be forgiving ourselves, whether it be forgiving our significant other, whether it be forgiving our kids or forgiving the perpetrator or whoever it was that we felt wronged us. Because when we hang on to those negative emotions, the only person we're hurting, especially when we don't forgive, is ourselves. As I've said so many times that the perpetrator could care less. <laughs> They're not even thinking about you anymore. And yet you're allowing what they did to you to affect you 5, 10, 20, 50 years later. So that's on you that you've allowed them to control your life because you weren't willing to process it and release it and surrender. Another important tool is to start to develop self-love instead of looking for love outside of yourself, instead of always looking for a partner who you feel is going to fill a void. Once we learn to accept ourselves and love ourselves for who we are, then we can really begin to grow and we have so much more to give to another person because we're not relying on them for our happiness anymore. That already comes from within. And so the relationship takes on a completely different dynamic. And the last thing is just letting go of those negative feelings. Making a choice that you want to move forward to be the best version of yourself that you can be. So I would like um, to encourage all of you to please uh, sign up at my Facebook group, which is uh, facebook.com slash group slash suddenly single now. And in there, I am going to be posting the links to these recordings uh, where you can come on live and ask questions of me for your personal growth. And also I'm going to be posting in there the link for my TV show, whether I'm recording it ahead of time or I have guests, uh, whether it be divorce attorneys or accountants or realtors, anybody that can help you to really grow to be the best version of yourself as you go through this transition. So please go to my Facebook, book, Facebook group, search the groups for Suddenly Single Now. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much. Have an awesome week.